All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to game number two of this third place match between W and D and Rain here in the international bracket of King of the C15. Let's have a look at lineups. Zaf, talk me through the W and D lineup here on the top end of the map. All right, Raptor, sure. Um, w and D is bringing a Montana and an Ohio. Interesting thing about the Ohio, if you look at his build, he is using preventative maintenance. On top right there. Wants to make sure his mm. guns do not get knocked out at all. Probably mm. also had a spare point and didn't know where to put it. Didn't know where to put it. Yeah, <laughs> but, reasonable. In any case, moving right along, um, let's take a look at the Alpha side first. Uh, we've got uh, Rush in his typical Des Moines. Let's just call it the Cots build because that's pretty yeah. much what we're seeing here, except yep. for radar. Uh, between him and No Name, No Name choosing not to use the radar module. Um, hmm. And then we've got ourselves a Cots build Harugamo. And a Cots build Ragnar. Moving uh, towards the uh, mid side, towards D a little bit, is Fairy's Grozovoy Raptor. It's the mm. first time seeing a Grozovoy in a while. Yeah. So, no established Cots build for that one, preventative maintenance, and uh, basically all the, the core build plus radio location and Swift in Silence. No unique upgrade. Swift in Silence. We have seen some unique upgrade Grozovoy throughout the tournament, but not today. Not today. Um, and remember, Swift and Silence is a nerf to gun rate of fire. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think that the decision to take the uh, slot six uh, reload module helps to kind of negate that a little mm -hmm. bit. We got ourselves a Manitar uh, heading over towards the decap, uh, fronted by an Ohio. And we talked about that a minute ago. And Dino is running reload instead of unique upgrade. On his Mosfo Raptor, tell us about the, the gentleman in red. Well, let's start looking over here towards the decap. Hexagen's Ragnar, full speed ahead here. Headed over towards D, backed up by Madara's Napoli. Looking like a little bit of reload there. Now, Lulu and Debiasen's Daring playing the middle of the board. Now, we've seen, we've seen Rain play this position previously on loop. We've seen Lulu make this play. Uh, this is going to be, mm -hmm. this is a bit of a, a risky play, but there's there's a case to be made that the south spawn on loop is a little stronger because of this little gap here behind Lulu's stern offers him a little more flexibility that the, the guys spawning up to the north don't have. Gangbrang's Ragnar That's was moving through the middle of the map. He got turned around there by an early radar from Russia's Des Moines. As yeah, nice job there with the radar. Indeed. Sheep's gearing and Artorius' Des Moines grabbing their the quote-unquote rain home cap over here on the B side. And backed up by Malamu's uh, general purpose build Montana over here. And reminder, Banship's Plebear and Brisbane. It's interesting to me, Zath, we've seen teams take very different tacks with loop, right? You and I saw enough some loop games on NA where teams leaned super heavy into pushing one flank or another, oh, where the middle, of, yeah, where the middle of the board kind of got left alone. But here, both teams actually making a play for well, every cap that they that they can get a, get a hold of here. Right, absolutely, and this is a this is a very aggressive open. Hexagen was just getting hammered, yep. almost took a torpedo as well. Mm hmm. Rain very clearly set up to kind of kite at D for the moment. Not really a pushing cap. Oh, Madara takes a big hit from Gasondo's Ohio right there. I think Rain's thought process was steal D, steal some early points, back off, mm -hmm. make them retake it. But uh, W and D having none of it, pushing pushing Hexagen off the cap. Yeah, they're looking pretty strong here. WND is obviously trading better at this point than Rain. Bit of the opposite is uh, from the last game. As Ferry now steps onto the decap, will that summon the radar from Hexo? Nope, it's on cooldown. Yeah, he used it earlier. Uh, I think uh, presumably to get some damage into uh, into Ferry as well. But also, I mean, there's not much value even if he even if he had it on cooldown. They have to they have to know he's kind of behind that island. Now Dubaisen making mm -hmm. a play for C. Yep, yep. No name popping off. Trying to get a shot with his no, radar. He's his radar's up, but he has no no line of no shells to be able to get over that that tall spot of that island in the middle of the sea. Dubai's well, backing still it, off long enough to get yeah, some conga torps down downrange. It's it's interesting that he still left that cap because as you said, nobody had shots on him. 
Matter of fact, sitting on that cap might have convinced Elbart to back up with this Ragnar. Yep. It, it, right into those torpedoes. But him getting off that cap, well, why would Elbart need to back up then? Indeed. Well, things have settled in for a bit. We're five minutes in. I think where we are now is where we're going to be for a little while. Rain's not in a position to, to threaten D. Both of the home caps, the A, B side, looking fairly even for the moment. Whereas, I mean, the Rain is kind of making this push up the one line with Artorias and Sheep. But W and D's got enough force back here. They ought to be able to receive it pretty well. So I think most of the action yeah. we're going to see for a bit is over here in the middle of the board. This is a very cautious push by Rain. You can see Arturius putting the radar up, just trying to get a glimpse of what's around before yep. the ra the uh, the smoke and before they even start moving forward. And now that he feels comfortable enough, he's called for the smoke. He's going to move farther up. But the problem is, well, his radar's down. And uh, <laughs> we, we can see that there's a WND force ready to receive. Well, they've got eyes on Phasey now, and, and Arturius' shells will allow them to know that, okay, something's obviously over here between the smoke and the shells. Arturius catching a glimpse of rush. The smoke comes out. The, the smoke comes up as the AP goes out. Hmm. Decent hit on rush. I think this was more of an exploratory thing, Zath. I don't think mm. this was a serious hardcore let's go all in kind of thing rain making another yeah. play for c here between dubison and gang Barang. and i'll tell you elbard narrowly dodged those single fire torps yet mm -hmm. again the daring torpedoes keeping elbard pushed back off the cap his radar ticking up dubison taking some punishment here getting long range resets coming in from dino yeah but i think he's gonna oh Ooh. no name Sticks his Dastards. nose out just far enough to get punished by Dastard's Vermont. Now the radar yeah, goes up. I saw Dastard on, making that turn. Now the ra all the radar goes up across C. They're trying to continue to get resets on Dubison, who was eight seconds from a cap, bails out because both the Ohio and the Moskva shells are already on the way. That's right. Rain not willing to give up any more of Dubison's health for this cap than necessary trying to get both of these radars to go on cooldown. Now, remember Zath, and we pointed it out at the beginning of the game, No Name is, is not running the radar duration module in slot, what, two or three, whichever it is on his Des Moines. Mm-hmm. That's correct. I believe that's slot two instead opting for, of all things, the uh, fire and flood chance reduction Indeed. module. Indeed. Which kind of makes sense where they're putting him, right? It, they, it, they figure he's probably going to be under sustained fire for a while. It does. And I think it's, in, but I think it's noteworthy, Ro, because I mean, with two destroyers here, you give them potentially give them the opportunity to break in if they're able to 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 draw both the radars out and play the gap between the Ragnar and the Des Moines correctly. There's about a 55 well, you, second gap there right now. If you look at the mini map, I'll tell you, Rain has a nice line <laughs> all the way through the mini map, whereas WND is a little bit more kind of uh, wishy washy with that Mosf in the backfield, Dino. And Ohio rotating around. But what's interesting is Rain is getting set to push into D. Ragnar and Napoli together. Yeah, with the Ohio and the Moskva pulling back towards mid, they've opened things up a bit for Hexogen and Madara, but Hexogen's spotted now by Ferry. I I have a As hard Madara. I have a hard time imagining that this is gonna be I don't know. I I, mm, I understand the thought process here. It feels a little too risky still. Yeah, Madara being waved off, you can see turning away now. Mixas are in, in a really good position with that Minotaur to just cover decap with the radar anytime somebody steps on it. W and D out to about a 130 point lead. We're getting close to the halfway mark of the game. They're continuing to take up that extra cap circle, of course, because they own A and D. I think they're pulling Artorius out, Zath, or are they trying to drag him back towards mid? I'm not sure what's happening here on the one line precisely. Well, the, the torpedoes just came through, so they probably figured this is their chance to reposition. And I kind of feel like, oof, hits on as the rush comes now. Yep. I think Good. what they're trying to do is... Put him in a position mm. to approach A cap. Well, check the 3-4 line as well. Malamu, mm -hmm. they pulled Dubison out of mid. 
They're leaving Gangbrain yep. to hold the back door closed. They're pushing Malamu's Montana straight up the three line. They're making a play for A. Exactly right, Raptor. Exactly. So uh, we can see some Montana shells coming out now on Russia's Des Moines. Smoke screen being applied. Does that push him far? Yes, it does. Sheep is now able just to walk into A. And there he goes. All so they had that to was all timed. That was all, all set to push the yep. radar off of A cap. Yep. All they have to do is push the Des Moines back far enough to leave a bubble for Sheep to get onto the cap. And he's got a pretty solid one here along the bottom end. Right. Mixa now popping the radar. Fair using his smoke to get free shots into Hexagen. Hexagen taking some hits, but I, I just don't think that's going to be enough to get him. Nah. He's going to be behind cover momentarily. No, Ragnar's armor will probably hold up to at least some of that. Fairy's guns shouldn't be able to get HE pens, many HE pens on him. Well, with a coordinated push up the western edge, Rain has claimed the A cap now. And so that's um, allowing actually, them to narrow the gap. Actually, Dino has shots on Hexagen's Ragnar right now. He's hitting him. Uh, he's probably going to get another shot on him. Here it comes. Hexagen has no more heals, by the way. Yeah. So as soon as uh, all that is going to just stick. That initial engagement, Hexagen just lost so much HP, he spent almost all his heals just kind of getting back to even. Mm-hmm. Minotaur trying to get some shots in, but I'll tell you what, I'm wondering what Daster's looking at right now. Is he looking at the broadside Minotaur? No. No, his guns yes, are pointed he... north. I think he's trying to get a shot on Dino. Yeah. Actually, I think, yeah, Dino, and then possibly also get a shot at No Name's face again. Eight minutes to play, 130-point lead for W&D, but falling on the strength of this, this strong rain push up the western edge. WD trying to get back into the cap. Ertug Sarugamo now opposing rain, uh, Sheep's gearing on the north side. So the A cap frozen. That holds the lead open about 125 points or so. Yeah, the only problem is that Ertug is detected because of the because of the, uh, the, the spotting difference. Concealment differential, yeah. Because that's a that's a unique gearing, isn't it? So he's a five five point six. Yep. So yep. he outspots the Rugamo by nearly a half a kilometer. And look at Rain now bringing also Dubison's daring, basically yep. saying, "Well, we're, we're not going to let you get this cap back, buddy." Sorry. Yeah, it's it's now basically like a four on three at the A cap between Artorias, the two destroyers, and Malamu's Montana, whose guns are still looking over in that direction. Yeah, Malamu fired one salvo into Ertug. Ertug using that last puff of smoke to break contact. That was a very well-executed play for him. WD now realizing that Rain is a little weak in mid as they've pulled so many pieces over towards A. They're going to push mm -hmm. Aobard in. That's going to draw Lulu's radar. Lulu going to move up to try to get some shots. Nothing doing. Less than 100 points now. Six and a half minutes to play. You can see now uh, WND's Ohio trying to move in to support a B push. Yeah, WND's east, uh, their left flank over here on the east, basically just kind of going all all in now, pushing hard. The mm -hmm. Ohio Salvo is actually going in on Malamu. They've got a really good shot at him from that angle. Looks like it's going to fall a little astern of, Mu of Malamu. Yeah, they didn't really get anything out of that. No, but Fazy's got a shot coming in as well. Same deal. But WND literally painting themselves into a corner up here on the west flank, and torpedoes coming into that smoke screen. Rush is safe? Safe. <laughs> WND now over 900 points, five minutes to play. 50 point gap between these two teams still closing. I'm a little surprised they haven't tried to push Lulu with the Ohio Zap. Then again, that's what Dastard's here for, is to protect that flank. Correct. Gassando can't make that turn without giving up his whole bloody ship. Well, he's he's sort of making it now. Airtug is detected again up to the north by radar. He's decided to hell with this. We're just going to shoot guns. 
And Malmus they're gonna lose him. Tana comes in. Yeah, they're going to lose him. Well, they haven't lost him yet. Battle ends in five minutes. That's Artorius' yeah. radar back there picking him up. It only takes a handful of there shells. It there it is. That flips the lead. Rain now seconds from a win. 30 seconds here to a rain victory. Artorius caught under radar. Big salvo going in on low. him. He's getting low, ticking a heel back there. WD needs this kill. More shells going. Get it. More shells going in. Phasey, yep, they get it. Flips the score back. 12 point lead, four and a half minutes to play. Anybody's game at this point. Anybody's game right here. A kill at the wrong time could end this game. Dino, I think, is going in to push. I think they're going for the Ram on Lulu. We're about to have a tie game. They're going to they're gonna take Lulu off the... No, they're going for oh. the drive-by? They're going for the drive-by. They're going to well, get it. I think they I think they wanted the Ram. Lulu said no. They wanted the Ram. All the oh, shells coming no, in look from at, the Des Moines. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, Dino manages it. All right, 995. A few more ticks, and WLD will win this game because they didn't take the trade at C. 998, there it is. Wow. Lulu goes down. They pushed up. They grabbed Lulu at the Ooh. right moment and tick over a win to force a game three. Yeah, fantastic game. You know, Raptor, I, I talked about yesterday that that closest game I've seen, 1,000 to 997. That was yeah. on this map. Yeah. That was on this map. And the team that won had one cap. The other team had three. <laughs> we went the what entire crazy, we crazy went the night. entire game, Zaf, and nobody ever owned the middle cap of the board, right? Nobody ever owned that B ca uh, C cap in the middle. <laughs> it's free real estate. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, let's uh, let's kick it back to the the studio and uh, have them chew on this. For oh a bit yeah, game, game three, Raptor. game three, baby. <laughs> let's go. We'll see you guys in a minute.